Hi, it's the Iowa Prairie Girl. Tonight I'm at Wilkinson Park in Rock Falls, Iowa, Saragota County. And tonight I'm going to try to do something I can't believe. Um, tonight I'm going to try to talk about sunflowers, and we're going to identify one specifically, the Maximilian sunflower. So if you've studied flowers at all, you know that yellow flowers, especially those in the fall, and right now there's loads of them. If you drive any county road, um, if it's unmowed ditch, you're going to find yellow sunflowers or yellow uh, wildflowers growing. And a lot of people kind of give up on trying to identify these yellow uh, flowers or sunflowers. And they have an abbreviation for them. And the first time I heard this abbreviation, I, I thought the lady was just making it up. But if actually, if you Google it, you will find the abbreviation DYC. What is DYC? DYC stands for Damn Yellow Composite. <laughs> what is that? So a composite is a plant or a compound flower um, that has multiple um, parts to it. So uh, part of, some of these flowers would be sunflowers, daisies, um, uh, shoot, daisies, and asters. Of course, asters. Asters are another plant that's just horribly hard to um, identify all the different kinds of asters there are. So uh, these flowers have um, two or, or have have a multiple of simpler flowers in that plant. So in the um, sunflowers, you have the center disc. We can look right here. We have the center disc, and that's part of, a, that's an actual flower of in and of itself. And then you have the, the rays, which are what we most of us would call the petals. And that's another flower in and of itself. And so that's your, your composite is your multiple flowers like that. So your DYCs are your yellow sunflowers that have so many um, similar parts to them um, or similar characteristics to them that it's hard to tell them apart. Um, now tonight we're going to take a look at the Maximilian sunflower and I'm picking, the, picking this one because it is actually um, probably the easiest one of sunflowers to identify and once you learn it um, you'll be able to pick it out from all the other sunflowers. Um, what else did I want to tell you? I, did, I took notes because there were so many things to tell you about um, these sunflowers. So it, it's interesting. A lot of times these sunflowers don't seem to follow the rules. As you read the guidebooks, um, many of them will say, well, they mostly do this or they mostly do that, but you might find one that does this or that. Um, did you know there are 70 different species of sunflowers in North America? And I don't know where you're going to find um, all these different species listed. In the Peterson Wildflower Book, they list 16. In the um, Audubon uh, Wildflower Book Field Guide, they list 10. And the Iowa um, Wildflower App um, lists 16 different wildflowers that grow in Iowa. Um, and interesting enough, all these guides, if you look at them and compare them, they often don't agree either. They'll list something um, different than the other one about a particular sunflower. So if you stay tuned, we're going we're gonna to take a look at this Maximilian sunflower, and I hope to um, show you some characteristics that will help you identify this sunflower um, and uh, make your uh, wildflower um, hikes more enjoyable when you can identify a particular sunflower. So stay tuned. with the characteristics of each part of the plant and like I said a lot of times the field guides will tell you that it should be this but it, it might also be this and so I'm going to start with the stem uh, so I have some uh, notes for myself so the stem is erect meaning that it usually stands up straight um, it's round it's really kind of a sturdy stem um, it, it does feel very rough and it has some uh, white um, uh, like uh, hairs to it so it's covered with densely covered with um, some white hairs. But so the color of the stem is the one thing you want to look for when you're trying to identify different wildflowers. Kind of like when you're trying to identify seagulls, you want to look to see what color their legs are. You want to look to see what color the stem is here. So the stem is light green to red to purplish. So there you go. You got three different colors that you can choose from. But basically, you're looking for a stem that's covered with white uh, hairs and then it, it's, it feels rough. Um, and like I said, it's, it's erect. It stands straight up. However, here's another however, um, the Maximilian sunflower uh, prefers rocky, dry places. Um, so, um, however, the guides also say that it will grow in damp or dry prairies. Um, so there again, you can't, your habitat could vary. Um, 
but preferably it seems to like dry areas. Now the two places that I've seen it a lot um, is at Lime Creek Nature Center in the Badland Loop. And the Badland Loop is part of an old quarry that was donated to um, the Lime Creek Nature Center. And then the other place that I've seen a lot of it is at the uh, Fossil Parks, which is in Rockford, um, Iowa. And that is also an old quarry and that has a lot of dry, sandy, um, rocky um, habitat. And that's where I saw that plant as well. Now, this is more, normally this prairie here is on the, on the wetter side. It has been a drier season. Um, but if you do find Maximilian uh, sunflowers growing in a rich, moist prairie, the tendency then is that it's going to, when, once it blooms, it will kind of lop over. Um, so there you go. It could be erect or it could, if it's really blooming heavy, it, the plant itself will lop over. So that's the stem. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the flower. Flower. Okay, so normally uh, the plant could be uh, between three to ten feet tall. Um, most plants that I find are probably about four to five feet tall. Now, I have to tell you, when I first um, identified the Maximilian sunflower, I figured it was called that because it was such a tall plant. So Maximilian, it was real tall. Um, but actually, it's named after a German explorer who in the 1830s uh, did an expedition in the Western Americas, and he's the one that named this plant. So his name was, he was a prince, Prince Maximilian from Germany. So again, so the, the plant can get real, rather tall. Um, the, the stem that I mentioned is unbranched up until the, it starts to um, come to where the flowers are, then it starts to branch off. Um, and then it has numerous flowers um, on the plant. And the, and the flowers themselves are called terminal flowers. Terminal meaning that it's at the end of a stalk. So there's one flower per stalk. Um, the flower head is anywhere between two to three inches um, wide or up to five inches across. Um, and then it has these rays. These are also, like I mentioned, um, a different uh, type of flower that's blooming right here on this plant. Um, and those rays, they have petals and there's between 15 to 30 petals. And those are um, um, at one and a half inches long and they are um, deeply veined, meaning you can see the veins in them, and they're often toothed, meaning at the end there's a, like a little notch to them. Um, the center disc is often yellow, however, and uh, that is about one inches across, but however it could be, um, you could find it when it's first um, starting to develop, it could be on a greenish color, and then towards the end of summer it could be more on, on the brown color. So again, there's your um, differences in that, in those descriptions for the for the flower. Now the one thing that many of us forget to look at, and it's really important when you're trying to identify um, a sunflower or an aster or some of these more difficult flowers, is that you want to look at the bracket. Now the bracket are the leaves at the very back side of the flower. And I, I, I've never heard it described this way, but this is how I think of it. When I think of a bracket, I think of something that holds um, like a bracket on a shelf. It holds the shelf up on the wall. Um, to me, I think that's why these are called brackets, that it holds the flower together. So you don't want to forget the brackets because the brackets are one of, is one of the parts that's really going to help you identify the flower. I have often gone home and uh, tried to identify a flower that through my pictures that I've taken, and I get home and I realize I forgot to take a picture of the bracket, and that was probably the one thing that I really needed to um, identify the flower. So on the Maximilian um, sunflower, the brackets back here are green. They are lancelet, meaning that they're narrow, um, and they're kind of a, a lance shape. They look like a spear. Um, layers. Often you will read in the guides, it will talk about how, how the brackets are layered. So in the layers here on the lancelet, they say that there's few layers. They're long and narrow and spreading. And these two are also covered with fine white hairs. So remember the brackets. Now the one part of the Maximilian sunflower that's really going to help you identify it is the leaves. Now once you learn these leaves, the leaves, this is the most important part of the Maximilian. This is the one identifying characteristic that really stands out. And once you learn this, when you go for a walk, you're gonna say, oh, there's that, that Maximilian sunflower. Once you learn it, you're not gonna forget it. So the Maximilian sunflowers, um, as you can see, are very long and they fold up. They, all, they make like a trough. So they're long and narrow um, and they have an oval shape and they taper. And they're lancelet. Lancelet, mean, lancelet means that they have a lance look to them, but they also taper on each end. Each end gets narrower um, and it's thicker in the middle. Okay. So 
they mostly alternate. There's another one of those mostly. So alternate means that as it goes up and down, uh, as it goes up the stem, they alternate every other. However, here's another however, at the base, the, at, towards the base of the plant, they might be opposite, meaning that they're just they're directly across from each other. Now the leaves can get really, really long. So at the bottom, the bottom leaves are between um, 10 to 12 inches long. And as they go up, the leaves get narrow or shorter. And the shorter ones, you can hear the short one right in front of me, um, they usually get, they can get to be about two inches long. And they are equally as wide though. They're always about two inches wide, whether it's the bottom or the top. So you can see that they curve, they curve downward. And so they kind of do this arch where they kind of go up and then they curve down. And then, like I said, they fold um, and they have that um, trough looking to them. Um, they're real rough. They feel rough on both the top and the bottom. And these two are kind of covered with a uh, white hair. And so they kind of gives them that gray green color to them. Um, the edges. So one thing you want to learn about um, leaves is you want to look at the edges. Um, this is one of those most leaves as well. Mostly they're toothless, meaning mostly they're smooth on the edges. But occasionally you're going to find one that has some small tooth, meaning that, uh, and they're, they're kind of spread apart. So occasionally you're going to find one that looks kind of serrated, kind of like a, a, a steak knife, um, and they're going to be kind of toothed. And that, but those are going to, if you find one like that, they're going to be um, widespread apart and not very often are you going to find one like that. So, oh, also one more thing, sessile. These leaves are mostly, not always, are sessile, meaning that they don't have a stalk. They come right off the, um, um, the stem of the, the plant. They don't have a stalk. But if you do find one that has a stalk, um, that stalk is going to be really short and it's going to be kind of thick. Um, so there you go. That is the leaf. So you really want to pay attention to the stem, the flower, and most of the flowers kind of look alike. So that's the hard part. Don't go by the flower too much. Most sunflowers, they just, they look like a sunflower. The bracket, very important, the back of that flower. And then in the Maximilian, um, it's the, the leaf that's really going to help you identify um, the Maximilian sunflower. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really like to come up with um, all the different nicknames for the, for the wildflower that I'm talking about. Uh, sadly to say, the Maximilian doesn't have any nicknames. It's just the Maximilian Sunflower. Um, so that's a little disappointing to me. Um, other things, the Maximilian Sunflower is a good uh, flower to have out in the pastures. It is edible for the livestock and they seem to really like it. And then of course it is a sunflower and so it does have a good yield of um, seeds. And so that's good for the upland birds like the pheasants. And then the songbirds also um, in, uh, get benefit from the seeds from the Maximilian Sunflower. As well as um, the rabbits like it when it's young. A young plant, they'll eat it, and then also the, the rodents on the ground, the ground squirrels, um, also benefit from, from the seeds. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I told you that it blooms later in the summer, so this is September. It's kind of a late summer, early fall kind of flower. It blooms for about a month, and it likes, it likes full, it prefers full sun. Um, what about a sunflower? I always like to throw in a little folklore. Uh, three things about sunflowers that I'd like to throw in. So the sunflower is the flower of loyalty. Um, there's a, a mythology that says that um, there was a, a god that uh, had a, a, a worshiper that watched, that would follow him as he went across the sky and he got kind of tired of her so he, he uh, sent a sunbeam down at her and uh, turned her into a sunflower. Um, so the sunflowers uh, show loyalty because they also follow um, the sun across the sky um, throughout the day and so they are loyal. Um, oh, there's also if you sip, if you put, if you slip some of a sunflower oil into someone's drink, that person will become loyal to you. Um, it's also a symbol of good luck. Uh, the sunflower is good luck, and if you plant them around your house or in your garden, uh, that should bring you good luck. And then lastly, uh, it is a symbol of truth, and it says if you um, sleep on a sunflower, um, put it underneath your pillow, um, the next day the truth will be revealed to you. So there's some folklore about sunflowers. So I hope you liked my video. I hope that um, 
you now can at least um, hopefully identify the Maximilian sunflower, uh, know some different characteristics that you should look for when you're uh, trying to identify um, a sunflower. And if anything, if you didn't learn that, at least you learned what DYC means. Um, so I hope that you stay tuned. Um, thinking about, I'm not quite sure, I might try, try to tackle an aster this fall as well and identify um, at least one aster for a video. So I'm glad that you stay tuned. Um, please uh, like my video, share it with your friends, and uh, just I encourage you to get out there um, and see the wonderful. Thanks. This is the Iowa Prairie Girl.